Welcome to the Up North Live High School Football Preview. Sponsored by BC Pizza. Hello, one and all. Happy high school football season. And welcome to Up North Live Special Season Preview brought to you by our friends at BC Pizza. We've got loads of content in the next half hour to cover all the key conferences, big name programs, and at the end we'll have a roundtable discussion with our friends from the Traverse City Record Eagle to discuss a number of topics for the season ahead. But we start with the team who ended last season. That would be the Kingsley Stags. Nine months ago, the entire community at Kingsley ventured down to Ford Field to see their hometown Stags defeat Almont 38-24 in the Division VI state championship game. Now, this group is back to defend that title, and they'll do so with two head coaches. Tim War back off winning his second state title, and he's given his longtime friend and coaching assistant Jason Morrow the title of co-head coach entering the year. With these two football minds and the work ethic the Stags have shown since War's return to the program in 2018, it wouldn't shock anyone to see Kingsley make another run to Ford Field by the end of the fall. When you talk about our coaching staff as a whole, there's just no egos. And, uh, you know, I just think this guy is so special for, for so many reasons. As a human being, as a coach, and as an educator at Kingsley High School, he certainly is at least an equal. If not, you know, he surpassed me as a coach. But um, I just think it's, it's a great opportunity to work with, you know, my best friend. They want it. You know, they want it. Now, wanting it and achieving it are two different things. And... We need to make sure that we keep working hard to make that happen. Um, but we have, you know, we have great kids, and uh, and they want their turn to try to make their own mark. For me, especially, I'm definitely more motivated because last year I was hurt the first game, so I I couldn't even do this camp. So it's like this year I just want to get right after, get back into it right away, so I can go hard the first game and go back to back. This torch has been passed from the Joe Lewis's and the Brady Herons and the Owen Graves on down to, you know, now the Chase Bots and the Land of Script Checks. So, you know, there's a lot of credit that goes to the alumni. That 2018 team that really struggled, you know, learning how to win, and then they learned it and they passed that on. Is it, It's been very special and just fun to watch. You know, when those young kids get five extra weeks of practice, you know, throughout the playoffs to Ford Field, and those freshmen are practicing against juniors and seniors, and the sophomores are practicing against Eli Graves. Those kids are going to get better. Um, are they there yet? No, but you know they're they're fun. They're a fundamentally sound group. It's just going to be a different style probably this year. Standing in the Stags' way of winning a Northern Michigan Football Conference Legends Division title this fall will be Traverse City St. Francis. The Glads are coming off a rare sub-500 season for the program, but head coach Josh Sellers believes. The experience gained by the younger group a year ago will pay dividends entering this upcoming season. The Glads will have another daunting schedule this fall as well, in and out of conference, which gives the guys the chance to get the best shot for the league title and to play at Fort Field as well. We're going to start the season with 35 players on the varsity roster and not a single underclassman, which I couldn't tell you the last time we've had exclusively juniors and seniors on a varsity roster to start the season. I, I don't know if we've ever done it. I guess we're going to see when we get banging around a little bit with each other and then again in the scrimmage what we're going to be this year but the expectations are high it's honestly crazy because this is the last of everything and this is the only shot we have in my high school career we haven't won a state championship and that's obviously the goal for our program last year def definitely did not cut it but i think we put some good uh, time this off season and i think we'll have a good sh shot at it this year Speaking of programs looking to rebound in 2024, the Boyne City Ramblers bring back a battle-tested bunch this fall, and they'll get the biggest competition with an upgrade back to the Legends Division of the NMFC. The Ramblers have spent the last four seasons in the middle-sized Leaders Division, including back-to-back -back conference championships in 2021 and 2022. But head coach Dave Suttle knows for his guys to play at their very best, the challenge of all the teams in the Legends Division, like Kingsley and St. Francis, is going to bring that out of them and they look to get that edge back that they might have missed in last year's 5-5 five and five campaign. I think that's part of been getting back to the roots of what's made us really good. And it's, it's, not, it's not always the kids or having, uh, even though we have some really talented kids and things like that, it's, it's about um, being good teammates, doing things together, working for each other, buying into a philosophy and a system. And that's for uh, coaches, players, parents, administration, Everybody and I think uh, our, our whole group is back together and we're ready to make a push deeper in the playoffs. 
Taking a look back now at the Legends Division standings from a year ago, Oklahoma Heights was actually the league champion at 4-0 before departing for the Jack Pine Conference this year. That gives Kingsley added motivation to win a conference title that eluded them a year ago, even though they won a state title. While St. Francis will be in the mix as well, Grayling should prove to me another tough opponent week in and week out in Sheboygan, looking to rebound off an 0-4 finish in conference. Looking back now at the Leaders Division from a year ago, where we mentioned Boyne City was a part of this conference before being bumped up to the Legends Division this year. The Charlevoix Raiders Raiders were the division champs in this one with a perfect 5-0 record. Benzie Central, a game back of them, along with Elk Rapids, Ascoda, and Tawas rounding out the standings. Those five will make up the leaders' division this year. And while we're talking about the division champion Raiders, talking about a consistent bunch that's averaged eight wins a season for the last five years. They've also had five playoff wins in that time, but head coach Don Jess knows his guys are embracing the challenge of making a deep run in the playoffs. Although the Raiders will be replacing a lot from a year ago, they expect to put up another, another fight this fall. Well, it started in the off season. We had a great off season in the weight room. Uh, we have probably the strongest team we've ever had uh, as far as the weight room goes. Uh, our numbers are down a little bit because we had 20 seniors last year, which was a rarity for us. Uh, also a blessing. We had a, had a great group last year. We're going to miss a lot of those guys. Um, but these guys have put in the work. Uh, they're hungry. We've got some guys in, in new positions, but uh, luckily for us, they're athletes and they're, they're catching on quick. It means a lot. Most of these other guys played middle school and all that, but I haven't. I didn't play middle school, so I've been with these guys for four years, and it's, it's my last year. So I'm super pumped, and I can't wait to spend another year with these guys. Let's take a look now at the NMFC Legacy Division, where it's quickly become one of the most interesting conference races we have here in Northern Michigan. East Jordan took home the league crown last year after a dramatic 38-36 win over Frankfurt in Week 8. That is quickly becoming one of the best rivalries in our area as the Panthers look to put their name in for another conference title this year. Glen Lake should be a competitive roster as well, coming off a 3-2 and two league finish under now second-year head coach Jesse Smith. And Mancelona hopes to catch some teams by surprise as well this year. Johannesburg, Lewiston, Harbor Springs rounding out those conference standings. So now let's check in with those division champion East Jordan Red Devils. This program has made huge strides in the last few years under head coach Adam Grybowskis. They won their first playoff game this millennium two years ago and added to that success with the conference title last fall. Add that with a dynamic offense filled with plenty of playmakers. East Jordan hopes to get a real boost into this upcoming season. Add to that resume over the next two plus months. Our approach really hasn't changed. You know, when we were on the other end of this, we, we always talked about one week at a time and getting better and taking each day. And, you know, that's kind of our message today is the, you know, the, the one inch. We got to be one inch better. And, you know, if we can do that throughout the year, look at how far we'll go. Um, you know, and that was the message from day one, and it's still the message today. You know, um, yeah, we, we won a league championship last year, but that was last year. So, you know, we're just focused on, you know, today's got to be better than yesterday. It's good to have because you know what it's like to be down, and then you get up, and it really helps you appreciate what it's like to have a winning season and how hard it is to have a winning season, all the work that goes into it. Of course, we mentioned that fun new rivalry between East Jordan and Frankfurt, the Panthers, Suffered three straight losses to the Devils since 2021. And whether it's the Week 8 meeting for the conference or another playoff game, Ed Schindler's boys are no doubt looking forward to another crack at East Jordan. The O-line is loaded with experience, while the offense always keeps things humming there in Frankfurt as one of the staples in Northern Michigan football, despite being one of the smallest schools in the state to carry an 11-player program. I think there's going to be you know three or four teams that really are shooting for that conference championship, certainly. East Jordan won it last year. Um, you know, they, they got us uh, in overtime the year before in the playoffs. So, you know, there's some motivation there. And certainly, you know, the Glen Lake game is always a start on ours. You know, everyone's looking for that. We go now from one of the smallest 11-player programs in the state to the best of the best for the eight-player programs here in Northern Michigan. We know Inland Lakes was one quarter away from winning a state championship up at the Superior Dome in Marquette last November before Martin came back to defeat them 30-26. to for the Division I title. The Marion Bulldogs made the Division II state finals in a 36-18 loss to Adrian Lenoy Christian. Now they're switching from Chad Grundy to Andrew Sikama as the Eagles head coach. The Bulldogs are still led by Travis Meyer once again this year, along with senior stat stuffer Aiden Fenstermacher as the Bulldogs look to finish the job last year's group started at the Dome. The message to the team right now is, is based on um, getting here and experiencing it and the, these guys, these three in particular, are kind of guiding our underclassmen to this point so that they know what to expect in the years to come. Because I, 
no part of our program says we're done. Um, no one in the state, based on any rankings, based on any newspaper articles, based on anything, really expected us to do what we did. And then even the ones that weren't totally shocked that we were here didn't think it was going to be a four-point game. I, I, regardless of when the points were scored, that's still a four-point game. That's a hell of a state championship. Looking at the Ski Valley Conference standings from a year ago, the Bulldogs winning that conference en route to the run to the finals. It's a very competitive conference. Gaylord St. Mary just behind them after those two played a very close 36-30 game in the regular season. Should be another good one between those two. We might hear more about that later in the show, as a matter of fact. While teams like Central Lake, Onaway, Pelston, and Bel Air look to be competitive in the Ski Valley Conference this fall. Here are the West Michigan D-League standings from a year ago. The Marion Eagles winning that one excuse me, outright with the Mesick Bulldogs right on their heels. Brethren also putting together some solid wins for the Bobcats. Manistee Catholic Central had to close in the offseason, which means they will not be back in conference again this fall. And we know the Upper Peninsula provides plenty of competition for teams who are looking to make a run to the eight-player finals. After all, it is in their home part of the state. Here's a look at all the teams from above the bridge from our viewing area that finished above 500 a year ago. We know Pickford's been an eight-player staple after winning the state title back in 2019. Panthers cut them off a 10-2 season. You know they hope to have played at the Dome last year. That's going to be on their minds entering this season. Newbury and Rudyard were also two competitive teams from the Great Lakes East Conference a year ago. St. Ignis, 9-2 in the Saints' inaugural season in the eight-player division. And after being an independent that first year, they will now be a part of the Great Lakes East Division this fall. Cedarville and Engadine, also two programs coming off strong, six in three seasons from a year ago. All right, we've covered a lot, but we've got so much more to come, including the biggest schools in our viewing area from the Big North Conference to our two representatives in the Saginaw Valley Conference, that being Traverse City Central and Traverse City West. More on those conferences coming up in just 30 seconds. All right, guys, here's what we get. We get BC Pizza. BC Pizza, BC Pizza. We go for some pizza right now. Welcome back, everyone, to our Up North Live High School football season preview. Thanks to the help from our friends from BC Pizza. We're going to shift things up to the two largest schools in our area competing in high school football. That would be the two schools who are part of the Saginaw Valley Conference. Traverse City Central and Traverse City West both left the Big North Conference two years ago to join up at the Saginaw Valley North Division. So they get adjusted now to new rivals like Mount Pleasant and the Bay City Western and Central Schools and Midland and Midland Dow. So let's start our talk with the west side of town, the Titans entering year two under head coach James Wagner. And it's hard to end year one any better. Yes, the Titans did miss out on the postseason, for a second straight year, but they did get that big time cross town rivalry win over Central since 2018. That first win since 2018 at Thurlby Field, 17 to eight. That wrapped up the regular season for West and made those guys pretty excited. We did catch up with the Titans on the first day of training camp a few weeks back, and they had a gigantic group on the field from the varsity level to the JV, all the way down to the freshman, big group of freshmen out for the Titans this year. So whatever Coach Wagner is doing, it's clearly showing an impact on the participation levels for this program. His culture slowly growing with the guys, and they appear excited to see how a year of comfort will translate in the program for the next several weeks. I always welcome people in just simply because you never know how someone's going to grow and develop. Like, freshman might be 5'5 five five when he enters through the door, and you might have a growth spurt, and he's 6'5 by the time that he leaves. And it's like, you just never know. And so you never want to turn people away. I think it's an awesome part of life, too, to experience football, a team culture, being some, part of something that's bigger than yourself. It's, there's a lot to be said about that, and there's a lot to be said about taking the game of football and the lessons that you learn in that and be able to apply it to your life as you leave this school. And so. That's, to me, that's the game, and, and being able to bring kids along, kids along and show them that, I mean, that's what sports are all about. And so for us to be able to share that with any kid, I'll take any kid and try to teach them that. I'm just trying to bring leadership and energy because 
I kind of know what the varsity level is like, so I think it's just really important to make sure the other guys have confidence and because uh, they have a lot of potential. Traverse City Central is looking to accomplish some big things in year three of their tenure in the Saginaw Valley. After making a run to the state championship game back in 2021, the black and gold have unfortunately suffered a combined 9-11 record the last two seasons. Eric Sugars knows this program is capable of more and entering his 10th season on the sidelines for the Trojans. He believes his kids will attack this season with a new energy that can return them to levels they're used to seeing. Our leadership council in the off season, we kind of meet with them and we talk about what, you know what's this team going to look like and you know what what's our focus and mantra going to be and uh, they 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 came up with sacrifice for success on a unity night uh, and we talked to our players about what that means. What's that mean to sacrifice you know my individual goals you know for the team? You know I might want to be this starting position, but the team need, needs me to do something else, so I'm willing to sacrifice for that. I'm willing to sacrifice time to kind of watch film, you know, and do the extra things that uh, help teams get better and help you as an individual get better. And we talk about championship habits and that's like sacrificing all the time what, what do my habits look like on a daily basis you know am I waking up am I eating right am I preparing for practice you know am I a good person so all those things kind of carry over and, and our guys have embraced that and they've done a great job so far TC Central football mean to you I mean it means everything like I've spent these last four years like it's just all about football like that's been my main focus and now it's like the the final season so it's everything yeah these last few seasons have you know left a sour taste in our mouth and we're ready to get back at it From two former Big North Conference schools to the most recent league standings from last year, it was Gaylord coming out on top with an undefeated run through a tough BNC a year ago. The conference is now loaded with high-level teams from both the lower and upper peninsulas. Sault Ste. Marie, Marquette, and Escanaba joining up last year. The Blue Devils will be reloading a bit after their team made a run to the regional round of the playoffs. Marquette was a competitive team in conference as well as Petoskey and Cadillac south of the bridge. A lot of travel for all of these teams, but a lot of competition shows just how tough of a league title this will be to win again this year and what these coaches know they have to do to come out on top. The thing is with our conference, there's always, you know, when you get up to that top level, there's nowhere else to go but down. And so, you know, th these guys know that there's a target on their back and we've got to go to work. But, you know, the biggest thing for us is, is not really looking at what other people think or, or, or anything like that. You know, it's, it's, it's we have our culture built in our program. This is how we're going to go to work every day and this is how we're going to achieve what we're going to do. And we're going to set our goals and expectations within our program. Um, and and we're, that's what we're going to do. It added some longer trips, but it makes sense when you have Sault Ste. Marie, Marquette, and Escanaba coming into the league. Uh, Escanaba is not a great trip probably for anybody, but it makes sense for, you know, they don't have anywhere to go either up in the UP. But um, I think it helped complete the league out a little bit. Having four schools in the league before that just didn't seem much like a conference. So uh, we needed to expand, and if that's the direction they went, it's, it's fine with us. And, you know, and they're all similar sized schools and, and similar programs. So I think it's been a good addition. We go now to the Highland Conference, where Beale City has been the class of that conference each of the last three seasons. But we've seen some notable movement from a few of the other schools, including the likes of Ever the last few years. And we know McBain and Lake City always bring tough competition to those opponents, all key teams involved in the league title race. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the Highland Conference standings from 2023. We mentioned Beale City. Yeah, nobody's been able to stop the Yankees the last few years, 7-0 in conference last year. Can't count out whatever it has been doing the last few years, though. Four straight playoff appearances for the Wildcats, 10 wins from two seasons ago. Lake City also strung together six playoff appearances in the last seven seasons. And McBain has postseason in each of their last seven seasons. 12 of their last 15, in fact, in a stat dating back to 2009 for the Ramblers. And rounding out some of our other area schools that we haven't touched on yet, Manistee coming off an 8-3 season and a tie for second in the West Michigan Conference Lakes Division standings. They got a 44-23 win over their rival Ludington a year ago as the Orioles finished the year 5-4. Reed City Finished 9-4 a year ago, but it's a battle-tested Coyotes program who made the state semifinals in Division 6 each of the last two seasons. So one win away from Ford Field both times, and that's going to motivate the Coyotes going forward. Big Rapids was victorious in the Central State Activities Association Gold Conference a year ago. They had a 10-2 overall record and a 6-0 conference finish in making a run to the regional finals for the Cardinals. And the Clare Pioneers, they were 7-3 a year ago, finishing second in the Jack Pine Conference, 
The Pioneers have only missed the postseason twice since the year 2005. So that's a rundown of key conferences and teams in our area. But up next, we have some real fun with the season preview as we get two esteemed high school football minds to join us to break down several key topics for the upcoming season. You won't want to miss it. So stay with us. We'll be right back in just 30 seconds. All right, guys, here's what we get. We get BC Pizza. BC Pizza, BC Pizza. I want to see that BC Pizza mascot at some games this fall. Welcome back to the Up North Live High School Football Preview Show for the upcoming 2024 season. Things are already underway, but as we know, there's a lot to be decided between now and when teams are crowned state champions, either at Ford Field on Thanksgiving weekend or at the Superior Dome the weekend before for the eight-player finals. So state finals aside, there's some pretty intriguing games to settle on the field in the regular season, and there's several big-name players from our area that are going to make a case for being the best of the best. For more on these topics, we sit down with our friends from the Traverse City Record Eagle. That'd be James Cook and Brendan Queeley. Break down the big conversation starters for this start of the season. Let's start with the players, guys. The Heisman Trophy is in college. You guys do the Record Eagle Player of the Year every year for high school. Uh, I want to know right now, you guys dissect the stats. You know the game tape. You know these guys front to back. Who are your picks? Well, give me maybe a front runner, but you can give some honorable mentions as well as who you think might be the player of the year in high school football this fall. James, we'll start with you. Uh, well, one of them is a, a team that was uh, in the state finals in eight-player football last year, and that's Aiden Fenstermacher from Inland Lakes. Uh, you know, he had over 3,000 combined yards last year between uh, passing and, and rushing. Uh, he ran for uh, 26 touchdowns and run and pass for 17 more. And, and then I had seven interceptions on defense. So, and that's a heck of a heck of a run there as a, as a junior to come back now as a senior. If, if we're looking at 11 player, uh, you can go to Petoskey, check out Seth Merrick. Uh, he is uh, in his senior year, uh, had 38 catches last year for almost 800 yards, um, had 12 touchdowns. Uh, I, I'm interested to see the, the quarterback situation at Frankfurt, if uh, Carter Kirby is, is going to be there because he was quite uh, good as well. Uh, we talked a little bit in the in the pregame uh, or the pre-show fist fight about Corbin Russell out of East Jordan, uh, and he's got Logan Shooks as well at running back. And I, I'll be paying attention to their stats throughout the season to see to see what they're doing week to week. Guys, let's look ahead at the whole season. We got nine weeks here to play some big time games, and I want to know. You can give me a couple honorable mentions as well, but give me one game that you think is the marquee game entering this season, either rivalry game teams projected to be the top in their conferences. What, what do you think? What game in the next nine weeks has you the most excited? Brendan, we'll start with you. I think week nine has a bunch of really good games uh, in teams that we talked about. Obviously, it has the Patriot game, West versus Central. And that to end the season, it, there's always going to be intrigue. Uh, but also looking at week nine, St. Francis versus Boyne City, Kingsley versus Charlevoix, teams that we've already talked about. Th those are very intriguing. I think Gaylord versus Petoskey uh, on September 20th is, is going to be a, a fun one to watch. In eight-player football, you've got, going back to the Lakes, they play Gaylord St. Mary in week nine. Um, that could be a good game where I, I think the St. Mary and Daniel Jacobson could be a very good team, um, you know, with him at quarterback. That could be one of the good games. You know, McBain against uh, Lake City in week, I think in week six is uh, always a big rivalry game. Uh, so I think that one would be pretty good. And I'm shocked nobody picked one of my new favorite rivalries up here that I always look forward to. East Jordan Frankfurt's becoming that cool game that you got to check out and says exciting finishes every time. So if that's week eight again, uh, that'd probably be my pick if I had to go with one off the dome. Speaking of domes, let's head to the Superior Dome. We want to know who's going to be diving into that state championship game for the eight player finals. I'll take Onekama. The, uh, they have all eight starters returning on both sides of the ball. Um, from a team last year that, that was that was pretty decent, you know, and and it's again it's kind of like a thing like TC West where they have a coach that's in his second year as the head coach, um, so so things should really start sinking in. And with that many guys back who played last season, I think that they can 
be a team who can make a run and be very, very dangerous by the end of the season. As we talked about before, but Aiden Fenstermacher out at uh, Inland Lakes, um, what the Bulldogs did last year, making that run to the state championship game and again losing in, I mean, heart shattering fashion. Really, uh, that was, a, am sure, a tough one to stomach. And I think everyone that is coming back from that team, uh, I guarantee you they still have that grief over that loss that they want to overcome. Has some business to attend to at Ford Field if some of these 11 player teams have their cards played right. Guys, give us a pick for the downtown Detroit atmosphere for state championship weekend for 11 player. Brennan? I will go to the, the team that I've been talking about with that one-two punch of Corbin Russell and Logan Shooks, uh, East Jordan. Uh, they're in Division 8 and I think it's for a team with that much talent, I think it's a winnable division. And I think uh, them making some noise in the postseason uh, would be not only good for Northern Michigan football, but, but good for East Jordan. I'm going to go to Division 8 as well, uh, knowing who you're, you're going to pick. I'm going to go with Glen Lake. Uh, they're a team that has, I think, 10 guys who started multiple games last year on offense back and nine on defense um, on that offense, including Benji Allen, who is our overall player of the year or athlete of the year for our entire coverage area last year so um and they, and again i think it's another it's another one where it's, it's a program it's in a second year under a coach so i think things will really really take a step forward and uh and then they have a pretty good chance at making a run there in d8 so let's circle it down glenn lake and east jordan that'll be a state semi-final played at a neutral site probably thoroughly field so all right we'll see you guys there in november Hey, you know what? I'm going to take the cop-out pick and go with the team that made it all the way there and won it all last year. I think Kingsley, even with losing a lot of pieces, they've still got uh, the personnel in place and the clientele in place. I like the Stags to make another run, at least to get there to Ford Field, and then we'll see what happens, who they play and what would happen. But uh, I think Kingsley's got the potential to, to pull that off again, especially now with two head coaches. So tough to beat that. Thanks again to our panel of experts, James and Brendan. You'll hear their thoughts throughout the season every Thursday as we preview every week of the high school football schedules. Already underway, games start on August 29th. We know the two-month journey begins as many of our area teams hope to make the playoffs. That'll get started officially on Friday, November 1st. The season goes by fast. November 1st is going to be here before you know it. The eight-player finals will be held once again at the Superior Dome in Marquette on Saturday, November 23rd, while the 11 player finals will be spread out over two days at Ford Field in Detroit, November 29th and 30th, the Friday and Saturday after Thanksgiving. Of course, we know the Kingsley Stags were there and were victorious a year ago. What is gonna happen this year? We'll just have to wait and see. That is gonna do it for our Up North Live High School football season preview thanks once again to our friends from bc pizza for helping us strap on the helmets and pads and load up the ovens with pizza getting ready for another exciting season of high school football here in northern michigan remember you can catch all the highlights from this year every friday night on hometown highlights good luck everybody